they went to the queen to tell her her subject had no bread. Do you know what she said? Let them eat cake. Okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, priming my eyes. This is the um, Too Faced Shadow Insurance. And like you guys, I'm seeing myself in the like <laughs> on the phone. I'm like, I look so tan, you guys. Marie Antoinette, she really wouldn't approve, or the courtiers at that time, they really wouldn't approve of this look. And um, I, I told you, I think this was in the um, Amalfi, Amalfi video, I think. Um, okay. The Amalfi video, doing my makeup in a jacuzzi video, is up, up there. And then in a moment you are gonna see another video, which is the um, Riviera Mermaid. I probably talked about this before, that my style is normally that kind of porcelain, alabaster kind of you know, skin with the blonde hair, like that. That's my look normally. But yeah, since I have been in the south, um, and even though I haven't been like tanning, tanning, for some reason I still get tanned, and I get, uh, even though I was wearing a uh, SPF and stuff like that, still get a tan. So during Marie Antoinette's times, this wouldn't be appreciated. That's the Fenty Beauty, the uh, brow brow pencil. This is, um, I've been light, light blonde. So I'm not doing my signature eyebrows um, today, this time, uh, the blue one. So now just sticking to uh, normally, normal, normal brows, I suppose. Um, but yes, yeah, so Marie Antoinette, yeah, she was known for her strawberry blonde hair, her blonde complexion. complexion. I have uh, just need to make this. Mm -hmm. So known for her blonde complexion and flawless skin, flawless alabaster skin and uh, slim figure. And obviously extravagant jewels, extravagant dresses, um, and obviously, kill most de la brioche, let them eat cake, which she didn't actually say. Here we go, that's a Natasha, Natasha, Natasha. Anastasia Beverly Hills, the brow dip. And it's again, light blonde. There are more and more documentaries made about Marie Antoinette, and she's like becoming more, I mean, People are becoming more aware of her, in my, in my opinion, like people are talking about her um, and actually talking about her like her as a person and not this like mythos we have created of her that let them eat cake and you know she just spent France into ruin and, and, and stuff like that. My boy is coming. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so now we get to, this is the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil, so just gonna put it on the, on the moving lid. So what got me, me into Maria Antoinette, and that's easy, it's the Sofia Coppola movie. Like I guess most people um, who like don't know that much about Maria Antoinette, or maybe from your history class you might have heard about her. So if you... Like yeah, most people, they know Marie Antoinette because of the um, the movie, uh, Sofia Coppola movie. And I remember when it came out, I saw that my, my mom, she bought it and I watched it once. I was uh, maybe 18, I think, 17, 18, 19. And I wasn't really keen on that. I was like, well, it's fine, but like, yeah, nothing really happens. Maybe I was too young to appreciate the nuances. So this is the Jeffree Star, the Bloodlust. This is the Bloodlust, Bloodlust palette, and we are gonna use Wet Jewel. Um, so yeah, I kept hearing, hearing about her and, and, and whatnot. Uh, but then, for, for whatever reason, I just, I got, I got really into French history um, and the revolutionary, the revolution period, the first one that period and I was reading a lot about it, watching documentaries and stuff like that. Obviously Marie Antoinette is being mentioned there. So then I remembered yeah there's the Sofia Coppola movie, watched it again and I completely fell in love. Just the whole look of the movie, it's so gorgeous. And it was such a privilege for them that they got to film it at Versailles. 
and like obviously all the historians are very disgruntled they are like the movie is not historically accurate like i'm a like a history nerd so yeah it, it, it like it's so removed from reality and what was actually going on at that time so i completely understand why the historians they can't really appreciate it i just i got it you know the the whole look of the movie the the feeling of the movie of being this princess you're just carted off to france and said you know you need to marry this 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 young man who doesn't have want to have anything to do with you but you know you have the pressure not only from the court but also from your mother from your home country that you need to deliver a child so i completely understand that feeling like and and, and like what sofia coppola tried trying to convey through the movie of this like this young woman being in a world you don't understand and just being so profoundly lonely and then eventually like as your coping mechanism you turned into like parties and shopping and, and stuff like that so and hanging out with your friends and with people you maybe shouldn't associate with but anyway you do that because you're lonely and bored so like completely understand her for me the movie is pure eye candy and that's why i got into it in the first place like why i started loving that movie so much because of the dresses the gowns the versailles the, the gardens the pastry the cakes well, the champagne obviously like my god she's a beautiful beautiful looking movie and the soundtrack is fantastic this is the natasha denona natasha denona glam palette and i'm gonna use this one so this is center eyelid it's interesting that she doesn't uh, mention names so this one and i'm just gonna put it in the crease so it's gonna be like a blending color like i got a bottle of champagne as a gift or, or something and i drank it in one go and i was what yeah i was watching the marie antoinette so then I came up with this, this thing called my Marie Antoinette day or my princess day, commonly known as my princess day. And the funny thing is when I started doing this, like I was so embarrassed in the beginning. I was kind of like when my flatmate, she would be out, she would be doing a flight and I'm kind of like, okay, now I set up everything. So I didn't want her to see me like that. And I, I think now I don't know why, but yeah, I was very embarrassed. Uh, so what I would do is I would dress up, like I'm dressed up, like now. So I would dress up, put all my jewels, do my hair, do my makeup and everything in the morning. And then I would, I had a, eventually I got a cake stand. I'll, I'll show you a picture, like, because I have done this, this, so, this, this so many times this princess day. So I have a cake stand, I would get macarons from Ladure, because luckily in Abu Dhabi we had Ladure. I would get, get the macarons and get the uh, cakes and then uh, yeah, get a bottle of champagne, a glass chilled in the fridge and then just, yeah, just paint and watch Marie Antoinette and eventually I started watching uh, Titanic, I finished Marie Antoinette, I was watching Titanic, the beginning, not the sinking then I was watching uh, Midnight in Paris, I was watching uh, Oh, uh, oh the Prix, uh, Priceless, which is Audrey the Two movie so I would watch all these like, ex kind of, and Great Gatsby, the Baz Luhrmann, Moulin Rouge I would watch all these ex like movies that uh, have a very extravagant look, and with Marie Antoinette especially, I could feel like I'm I'm there with Marie Antoinette and her friends drinking champagne and just like having a good time. How how I came out or whatever was one of my friends. Uh, they were um, they were asking me in our friend group. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the new one. So dazzling diamonds. This is gorgeous. This part. like my goodness, that's gorgeous so fun so i'm gonna use the black one and i'm just gonna put it in the corner to smoke it out so yeah so my friend in our, our friend group like whatsapp group so he was like guys what are you doing today like he's off so everybody else is flying i'm like i'm in abu dhabi and i was i think already tipsy at that point and then he was like kind of like oh you know you, you want to hang out or something like he has booze and you know music and stuff like that we can just hang out and I said, well, you know, you can kind of come over, however, <laughs> like, I said, yeah, you can come over. And then uh, he did, and I was like, in, in my dressiest, you know, state with the jewelry and everything. And I was like, you have to swear you don't tell anybody. I was so embarrassed. And he was like, oh my God, like, this is so fabulous, like, fantastic. Like, that's so much fun. So we were just drinking champagne and listening to music. And like kind of after that, I, I outed myself to my flatmate as well. And she was the same thing, like we need to make, like kind of make this thing to a thing, like this is fantastic. And that's when I started hosting my afternoon tea champagne parties. 
So yeah, I would set up everything, get the, the macarons and the cakes and everything, champagne, like bottles and bottles and bottles of champagne. And uh, yeah, just invite my friends over and we would have tea and listen to music and just chat and just have a princess day together. So pamper yourself like this. And I, I, I'm telling you, if you, your significant other, so if you introduce this thing to them, like, yeah, let's have a Marie Antoinette day. I think princess day for many people would be kind of like, uh, so let's just tell them let's have a Marie Antoinette day and just do what I do and uh, yeah just, just just have a good time because I'm telling you it's, it's quite fun even if you are adult doesn't matter doesn't matter your age but but just just do that it's so much fun so we are gonna continue with this one and then we are gonna take this one to put it in the inner corner and to highlight so yeah, basically everything you have heard about her, all the cliches and stuff like that, none of them are true. Like she never said kill Mosh de la Brioche, let them eat cake. She never said that. Um, she she was spending, but um, that was expected of her. At the end of the day, she was the queen of France, so she was expected to buy new clothes and support the uh, French silk manufacturers, the French companies, uh, and clothing designers and 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 what else so that was expected of her spending and there um um what was her name amber butchard who is a fashion historian in one of her um episodes i forgot the name of the tv show but yeah in one of those episodes she did an episode of marie antoinette and actually like she said it very well at the end of the day like it doesn't matter what she did like she just couldn't win everything she did just wasn't good enough and okay, she had very bad timing as well because when uh, when she was spending and buying all those clothes and diamonds and, and pearls and, and what else, so people would say like, yeah, she spent in France into ruin, even though that's what was expected of her. But when she moved to Petit Trianon, which was given to her by her husband as a gift, so kind of like her country house, like her Hamptons house, or like back home we in Finland we have something called Mökki, which is a cabin basically. So my parents, we live in Helsinki, we have an apartment in the city, but we have a house in the countryside as well. So that was kind of her thing. She had the palace well side, but she had her own, uh, own house um, on the grounds of Versailles called Petit Trianon. So there she started dressing down. She was just wearing this like very simple um, chemise, like a cotton dress, very, very simple uh, English cotton, I believe. And now they are saying like, now she's not a queen anymore because she's dressing down. So she's not a queen anymore. So still like, okay, she's like, I'm not spending anything anymore. Like, okay, she built a hamlet for herself in the Trianon and she refurnished the Trianon. Okay, fair enough, very expensive. But now she's not buying diamonds anymore. She's not buying dresses anymore, like very simple stuff. And she's not having big parties anymore. And still people are like, it's not good enough. Like now you're not a queen anymore. So we don't, we still hate you. So everything she did, it was just, the timing was very bad. And it's just like, yeah, people were just not, yeah, she just couldn't win. I thought that was very well said by Amber. So just that, yeah, she just couldn't win regardless what she did. All right, so for, for foundation, because I'm still tan, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, number four. And this is Rodial uh, Skin Lift Foundation, number 10 in vanilla. Um, but otherwise, Marie Antoinette, uh, she was known to be very generous, very kind. Uh, some people have referred to her as almost like um, uh, Princess Diana, like how actually, how charitable and how just how, how, how kind and generous she was because she was coming she came from Austria so from Austria uh, from Vienna and her mother was the Empress and she was actually they were living a very normal life compared to like how royalty used to live at that time so that's why Marie Antoinette had quite a few issues in Versailles once she got there even though she had been prepared in in um, in Austria what was to come because that's that's what I find so confusing in the Sofia Coppola movie. It's kind of like she wakes up, okay, you are, you have to go and get married, like whole ass to Versailles, and it's kind of like no, they actually went. I think for a year or so they pre were you know preparing her for her big move and her new life, which was kind of good, but still still she wasn't prepared. What was uh, what her life was gonna look like in, in Versailles? So. So yeah, she was 
she was very kind and yeah because in 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 austria she would do charity work a lot of charity work because you know her mother told them to you um so like some historians said that you know they let them eat cake she would actually give people the, the cake instead of like how like just no just let them eat cake like no she her personality was she would actually give them the poor people the bread or, or the the cake um, and she was very mischievous as well. She was uh, she was fun loving. She loved, like not very studious compared to her husband. Her husband was very studious, but she wasn't. She just she wanted to have a good time, you know. Even uh, when she started growing up, when she had children, okay, she kind of got more serious about her role as a queen of France. But before that, in her like teenage years, because she got married when she was fourteen, so in her teenage years and in her twenties. Um, she was very like a yeah, fun loving and uh, a very fun fun person honestly uh, and obviously headstrong because she wouldn't listen the um, the ladies at court or her aunts oh, really need to go her aunts wouldn't listen to them so yeah overall mischievous but also well meaning like she she wasn't being mean on purpose basically um but yeah um i'm like what else so maybe I'll, I'll finish this just very quickly that's that and then consider with this foundation again this is the lumene blur 16 hour long wear foundation so just gonna use it as a as a concealer under the eyes so Marie Antoinette her yeah like I mentioned before her favorite thing in the morning was to have a croissant and coffee and I really got into that um, there's this book called Marie Antoinette diet and it mentions that um, yeah she was very fond of her her morning coffee and a croissant and a fun fact like even I, I didn't notice before until you know I got into Marie Antoinette was that um, croissant is actually from Austria. It's a Viennese pastry. Um, it was called Kipfel. And it was because the, the Austria, they won Turkey, so they defeated Turkey or something. So to com commemorate that uh, that event, they came up with this, this pastry, because if you look at it, like it's, it's, it's like a crescent. So it's supposed to be the Islamic moon or the, yeah, the, the Muslims, they have that um, in, in uh, Islam, yeah, they have the moon symbol. So that croissant is supposed to symbol that, like Austria's triumph over Turkey. <laughs> and then, yeah, she, she, so she had that in, in, in Vienna. And so when she got to Versailles, she in instructed the pastry chef to make it for her. And then obviously the French, they fell in love with it. And then now it has become part of like, French culture and I love my morning like when we were staying at um, a fair fair month, yeah, which was the Monte Carlo video the Riviera mermaid video I did so we had free breakfast because we got a fancier room so we got free breakfast delivered to the room so I would always have croissant every morning I would have croissant and we had an espresso machine so I would have my coffee and my croissant and it's like I'm Marie Antoinette <laughs> And so this is the Natasha Denona Diamond Diamond and Glow palette. So it has a blush and a highlighter. Uh, another thing about Marie Marie Antoinette, uh, she loved music. She was very good at playing music. So I said she's not very studious, but she loved music. So she was very good at playing the harpsichord, which was like a piano. And also she was singing and dancing ballet when she was younger. And in Vienna, they would actually do performances. The children uh, to the court would perform to the to the Austrian court. And, and Maria Antoinette, she also um, she would do plays and again perform at Petit Trianon, like you see in the Sofia Coppola movie and in um, the Affair of the Necklace uh, movie as well. You see Maria Antoinette is performing at the Petit Trianon where she actually had a stage built for her so she could put on this place and pretend to be um, an actress or um, yeah a pe performer uh, and that's the um, Kat Von D when it was still Kat Von D um, tattoo liner uh, actually I'm gonna spray my face first 
I'm not gonna put any powder today, or maybe I should, maybe I should. <laughs> this is uh, the Fenty Beauty, the lavender powder. Um, and I think, yeah, she was the happiest at the Betty Triano went because it was her place, that was her court. Like everybody had to be invited, you couldn't just go there, you needed to have this special coin to get in. And even her husband had to have that coin, otherwise he wouldn't be admitted. Um, so I think she was the happiest there when she could pretend to be this shepherd, uh, shepherd, shepherdess or um, a milkmaid and, 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 and stuff like that. And just, just forget about the fact that she's a queen even though she was wearing like whatever jewelry. Well, she was herding pink sheep, apparently. So I'm just gonna spray my face and I'll get back. There we go. And then underneath the eyes, so I'm still gonna use the, the Charlotte Tilbury, the pink one, or the white one. It was pinky, pinky white. So I'm just gonna put it in the inner corner. And underneath, I'm gonna back to the, uh, the glam palette. So I'm gonna use this one. This is outer eyelid. So this very dark color here. So I'm just gonna put it underneath the eyes. There we go. And then mascara. Is of course it's the Charlotte Tilbury the push up, pillow pillow top push up lashes, and then on top I put the uh, the Kush milk mascara. Like I noticed that actually I nicked myself with the, with the mascara. You can't see that, but actually I can turn that into my advantage in a minute. There, so now that the dot I have here uh, you can't see it, but we, I don't think you can see this right here. So I can actually turn it into my advantage. I mean, it should be close actually somewhere here. But if I make it bigger, there. So now it kind of looks like those beauty marks. Beauty marks they used to have, and it should be a little bit closer here actually. But like this one means like, like I'm gallant, I'm very brave. If you have it somewhere here, like Marilyn Monroe, it kind of, it meant just you want to be kissed. And now, so I'm gonna mix the lipstick. Uh, what I found interesting about that, like, what kind of inspired me to create this look, because like historically the Marie Antoinette makeup, uh, it's supposed to be literally just a little bit of mascara, like mascara at that time would be like coal, a little bit of coal, flaming red cheeks, and then maybe just a little bit like a, a tinted lip balm and that was it and powder obviously a lot of powder but, and the beauty mark but that was otherwise it like they wouldn't wear that much makeup because again makeup was more for like prostitutes and for the stage but i what i found interesting in the sofia coppola movie was that yes the face was very fresh and very clean however the lipstick was like bright it was either red 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 or occasionally it was like almost like this berry color i'll, I'll show you this the jeffrey star um hi how are ya? um so you can see this is like really like really red pinkish almost a berry almost like raspberry so it's more on the cool side so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take some of this and i'm gonna mix it with this red Dior lipstick, which is the uh, number 90, number 80, 860 uh, Rouge uh, lipstick. Yeah, 
yeah so there we go we are done um i'm i'm, I'm happy how how this look turned out so like i said it's more like it's Marie Antoinette uh, inspired so like I said if you want to be like proper Marie Antoinette then obviously bigger hair and much less makeup but I was just the red lips from the um, from the movie really really inspired me so I'm like okay decided to create this look for this Halloween if you're deciding to if you if you can't go out or if you're gonna have fun with your friends or whatever or even for your zoom Halloween uh, Halloween party so you want to be more like glamorous modern Marie Antoinette so this is it um, yeah, I hope all of you are staying healthy and happy and um, yeah, I think this is coming before Halloween, but anyway, <laughs> so happy Halloween everybody, it's gonna be, uh, it's my birthday might as well, so I'm coming up with a birthday, my birthday look is gonna be the next one I'm gonna be doing, but anyway, <laughs> I had fun making this video and I hope you, you like watching it as well, so stay healthy, stay happy and I'll see you in the next video, so bye, ciao!